Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Painting with Myself. Woohoo, got some gaming. Um, arrayed in front of me is some secondhand tanks and sentinels for my Steel Legion. So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I go about with some secondhand stuff and uh, basically how we convert it across into Steel Legion very quick using an airbrush and spray cans. Um, I'm not going to be too bothered about using brushes, although we will be using them. Um, it's not really going to be essential for me to be able to do a lot of brush work. So the idea is to get it done quickly, and uh, to get them out there quickly. Um, so the only real brush work is probably going to be so a lot of the metallics. And maybe some of the Imperial Eagles. I've started by, um, I actually cut away um, a lot of the weapons. The weapons were, a lot of these weapons were attached. Uh, as you can probably see from this pipe here, which I'll probably cut that away. And what I've done is I've magnetized all the Sentinel weapons because the Sentinel bits actually came in with the weapons as well. But there was no missile launcher. I don't know if that's an older kit. I know some of them come with missile launchers or if it's a different kit. If it's like the Scout Sentinels that come with it, I don't know. Um, but it did give me a vast array of weapons to be able to use on the four Sentinels. I don't think there was a... Because of course these are second hand, it wasn't actually all of them, so I've got a couple, what about three plasmas, uh, three flamers, there's three las cannons, two multi lasers, pretty much with four sentinels, it's probably going to be how I'm going to roll them anyway, I'm probably going to roll half and half, maybe half flamers and half um, las cannons, maybe plasmas, just so I can get them up there and start annoying, uh, <laughs> annoying folk on the battlefield. I got a couple of Lehman Russes. Um, these came with some of the bits out of a turret for exchanging purposes. I don't think that's going to fall out of my day. Um, I don't know if a lot of those will actually fit but I can always try. That was a conversion. The rattle cannon bit came and I'm not really bothered about a, dem a, dem a demolisher so I kind of just cut off the end and made it look like it's just a slightly longer battle cannon. Um, I'm probably going to be using some of these as command tanks to be honest with you so the idea would be to add it as a formation, maybe have a couple of command tanks and then have the four sentinels as four fast attack choices. Although you never know, I might have to need some, well I've already got quite a bit of heavy support actually, yeah probably don't need heavy support but and then we've got a couple of chimeras because chimeras are always important i have had to snip away bits that i didn't like personally it always happens when you get second hand vehicles and they had some weird form of plastic across the top trying to be tank guards i think that's like an old uh, something and i've just ripped that off now i'm not going to clean these up because during the painting process we are going to be looking at doing the tracks. Probably going to rip that off as well, actually. Um, and that, there we go. That's gone. I like to have bare bones vehicles. I'll get that off with you now. Um, I like to have tracks um, that are mucky and dirty when it comes to creating the vehicle quick. That way, because it's got mucky and dirty, it does mean you can actually get it painted quicker. And you can paint it with an airbrush and possibly just a big fat old brush slapping on some typhus corrosion and that type of thing to try and get some weather in it. Um, the other track guards I can't get off <laughs> but they're all right because they're the ones you used to be able to get in games workshop sets anyway and unfortunately I am I'm stuck with having heavy flamers there because there's no other options but that's what happens when you buy second hand vehicles. Um, although chimeras are going to be rocking forward anyway so I think a heavy flamer might actually be a good option. Because well, you know, it's a heavy weapon, so I can't roll forward. And then, of course, the selection of weapons for the tanks, because whoever's actually had the tanks have left the ports open, allowing me to be able to interchange the weapons by sticking them in and out. No need to magnetize these, because by the time you sprayed them and sprayed this, the stiffness is going to fit it in anyway. Uh, and of course you'll not see any of the, the bit that gets scraped off because it will be inside the actual vehicle. Uh, I'm still going to keep them a little bit generic because I will probably drop them in, in and out of my Colt Mechanicus. You never know, I might even find some, some stickers or little tags that I might be able to stick Colt Mechanicus on somewhere. Just to, on a temporary basis. You know, like maybe blue tack them or something like that. 
But anyway, we're going to get all this cleaned up. Uh, we're going to get the bit sprayed black that needs spraying black. The majority of that sprayed black, but I'll get it all snipped up. And um, we're going to start, I'm going to show you, uh, probably mainly on the Sentinels because it'll be easier to do. But we're going to show you how we're going to uh, actually paint this Steel Legion colour. So, got them all sprayed black. I'm just going to show you the process of what I'm doing on a couple of the figures. I'm not going to be showing you at all. Mainly, I think, on a Sentinel and a Lehman Russ without the track guards. That'll be easy enough. Or maybe the other one, actually, no. That'll be easier because, of course, you can see the front plate. Right, so the first off, we're going to hit it with, surprise, surprise, Steel Legion Drab. I'm going to airbrush this. This is going to be airbrushed all over the vehicles, and I'm going to be using airbrushes mainly because um, the airbrush itself is going to give you a smoother finish. So if you're not invested in an airbrush, I do recommend that you do so. Because you do get a smoother finish on these type of models. Right, let's crack on. Next up, we're going to be hitting Talan Sand. Now, pay attention, hopefully I'm going to be able to do this just on the video, but I'm going to be kind of hitting the plates. So I'm not going to be hitting all the edges, I'm just going to be kind of hitting plates, hitting the parts, not trying my best not to go over. So we're just leaving the, um, the actual sanding, uh, leaving the actual colouring around. I'm trying to do a typical airbrush technique is the best way of trying to explain it. I'm not explaining it fantastically, but You'll see what I'm doing when I'm actually painting. Too bad at the moment. That's quite alright. Next, we're going to dry brush it with some Tyrant Skull, some Citadel Dry Tyrant Skull. Just lightly on the edges only, just to catch the raised tiny pieces. And uh, I'm going to the airbrush and everything else. The main armor will then be done. I'm not doing any fancy patterns or anything of that nature. We're just going to do a standard armor. We're going to put some transfers on. I'm going to show you how to do the tracks quickly. It's just mainly so we can get these figures done. We can get them out there. So now we've gotten to this particular stage, uh, we've got our nicely airbrushed coat on, we've got our um, nice, well, a little bit of hedge highlighting as it were with a, uh, a dry brush, because of course it's a big figure, so why not? We're now going to add black details. Um, so we're going to add in some black detailing, 
just using your standard whatever you use for black I've got two types I've got like a, a matte black as well which, dull, which looks very very dull down but I'm not going to be using that I'm just going to be using Aberdeen black or Baden black uh, from workshop um, just to be able to uh, cover the whole thing if you want to try contrast at this stage you can do uh, just to paint in your black details I'll not have a lot of black details myself that will actually be painted in it on just with little bits possibly the weapons and maybe the uh, little edges that goes up to there so like things in there that'll possibly be black that'll be black so let's crack on Right, so we've gone over those tiny bits of black. Make sure you go over twice. Keep it nice and thin. Uh, two thin coats. I'm not using contrast just yet. Um, once that's done, we're going to do a little tiny bit of a dry brush. Um, just using some. Normally, I just use Dawn Stone if I'm doing it quick. Um, or actually, what I might do on this one, trying to keep it quite dark, is probably hit it with some black, uh, Dark Reaper. So normally, a dry brush of Dark Reaper, and then a dry brush of Dawn Stone, just touching the edges over the top one after the other. You can use a large dry brush or a, I've got a medium dry brush in there and I've also got a small dry brush, I might actually use a small one. I've got a medium one, might be okay. I think a medium one will be fine for that. So just using a medium dry brush. The standard dry brushing technique, I always have one of these handy, which is my uh, paper towel. Just tend to open it up, find a plain side, and then just use that. Put it down wipe it off you'll see that in the video so let's get some dawnstone followed by dark reaper on these dark areas Don't forget at this point, this is when we have to do the weapons. So again, dry brush dark reap, dry brush dawn stone, get all that black uh, painted because of course this is an armor against steel legion, and the weapons are black and silver. Oh yeah, at this point, keep the plasma guns separate. I'm going to be doing plasma guns because of course I'm copying my actual infantry that I have. Personally, my plasma guns are going to be old school. They're going to be yellow. So I'm going to airbrush them later on. The black part of the weapons are done. What I'm going to do is to start masking off certain things. And on the tanks, masking off certain things, we're going to airbrush some silver before we're going to hand paint some silver. So the bits that need airbrushing, like bigger weapons such as that and that, they're going to get airbrushed. The tanks, the ones with the bulldozer blades at the front, them blades are going to get masked off up here and they're going to get airbrushed. We're going to leave the tracks for now and then everything else is going to get painted um, silver, hand painted silver. And I'm actually using a really old bolt gun metal, but I think it's lead belcher that you can actually use at the moment, or any silver, or any darkish silver that you've got in your set. Okay, so all weapons, dry brush black, all weapon is now painted silver, um, but we do need to do the silver airbrush. This is power film, if we've not explained it to you before. Comes in a nice roll, similar to that. It's not that expensive. I tend to get it off Amazon and it's a stretchy material. Um, you can 
as you can see from here you pull it stretch it and it adheres to itself so it doesn't actually when you pull, pull it peel it off it will not rip off your paint it's a fantastic material for masking um, and if you have difficulty uh, sort of putting it into certain areas you can always pat it down with the workshops um, sculptural which I'm hoping to still do somebody told me they're taking that off off for sale so if you can get all of them get all of them same on the chimera so we've got a chimera with a plow we've got a luminous with a plow and then of course we've got all these lovely legs so that's why i've covered the whole entire head I'm not really going to consider it i can just spray I can just spray those legs Right, now we've got these two particular pieces airbrushed and drying. We're now going to hit them with some null oil through the airbrush. This is only going to be on the bulldozer blades. The rest of it we're just going to slap null oil on using a brush, uh, letting it follow its natural course of course. Uh, we're going to hit it in sort of more of the recess areas with the null oil um, on the blades. Simply because the bigger areas, when you're painting the bigger areas with the null oil paint, uh, of a wash sorry it won't apologies it won't settle right it'll look funny it'll look weird it might settle in wrong areas which is it's a big reason why i don't like to use contrast paints on big surface areas so what we're going to do is to just paint those two with the null oil in the corners give yourself a narrow stream maybe knock your psi down a little bit um, and then of course just give it a little bit of shading using this technique So after you've airbrushed null oil on, um, you've got to go around certain pieces and of course you, I'm wanting you to put null oil on certain silver bits using a brush. I've already done the legs from these guys, as you can see they're nice and coated, and I've done the weapons. But certain silver pieces I don't want you to hit with null oil. These are going to be the little bits, so like the last gun from there and the last guns from here. What we're going to do is use a contrast paint, and the reason we're going to do a contrast paint is because it gives us a um, a lot better finish without having to hit it with a dry brush. Because if you're going to hit these with a dry brush again, you might make a mess. So rather than risking um, the items to be ruined, what we're going to do is use a one hit, and we're going to use the I think it's called yeah, it's the Griff Changer Grey, and I'll show you it in a moment. So like I say, although before I turn the camera off, remember, don't paint all the silver pieces, and the silver pieces that you want, uh, like the eagles and such, and these bits, you need to keep those clear. Um, I know I've not, I'll be honest with you, I've not done that very well, but I'm gonna saturate it, and then I'm gonna wipe off the excess there, but there we are. Uh, that will get into all the nooks and crannies. That's going to be painted with contrast paint. Those will be painted silver. That will be... I can't dry brush. So we're going to use the special technique. And it's going to be the same with that piece there. That's going to also be done with a special technique. Um, I'm keeping that on there. Even though that there, those weapons will need a dry brush. I'm keeping it on for now. Because we're going to be... Let's, yeah, it's going to need some oil and a dry brush. We're going to keep it on for now to make sure that these are actually quite protected when it comes to a dry brushing. If you can, you can always coat that with oil. But yep, do it all. Do all the little pieces. Get Van the on the oil wash because you know you're gonna be dry brushing. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that actually. That's a mistake that because I can't really dry brush in there, so what I should have done is use the Griff Charger. So on the other weapons, that's what I'll use. I'm going to use the Griff Charger on these last cannons because they're a bit more difficult to get into. I'm going to show you a little bit of this Griff Charger grey. I'm going to hit that last gun with it. I'm 
some of it I intend to be silver, the rest of it is going to be black of course. I'm going to do it on these here, I know I'm resting models on top of models but both of them are quite safe and secure. Once this dries, it goes down a little bit and it just basically gives you silver, just like some from natural highlights without having to mess around. If you don't want to dry brush on top, no, no, it's fine if you want a really dark looking silver, but a lot of the time I prefer to dry brush on top of it. So I've found that this contrast paint is, I'm going to need a better brush than that. Right. I'm finding that this contrast paint is really good for certain things. It's not Games Workshop's marketing it as the be all and end all. To me, it is not. When you're doing stuff like this, it's a fantastic glaze. And I'll, I'll get a lot of comments saying, oh, it's too expensive. You know, I live in the UK, less than a fibre a bottle, and it'll last you ages. So, to me, not bothered. <laughs> I am bothered, really. Um, but it does give a completely different look. And I'm going to hit these as well with the Griff Charger mainly just pulling it towards the edges and that's because it'll just when it dries it's just going to look better than me having to go back over it with i don't have to exactly be 100 percent neat no. it'll just give me the, the perfect look that i am actually after okay so while we're waiting for all that to dry we're going to concentrate on some plasma um, so I'm doing this yellow two pots here. We've got Avalon Sunset and Flash Gits. We're going to airbrush that over the top. I know it's a black undercoat. It will work. Don't worry about it. And uh, then we're going to be applying Flash Gits yellow mainly as a spray, mainly across the top of the actual plasma guns. The plasma guns for the, <laughs> uh, as you can see, I put them on cocktail sticks with a bit of blue tack. They're the ones that's going to be for the Sentinels. Uh, that's just to make sure that I can get all of the actual um of the paint all over the actual guys themselves guys all over the models and then with these i can just hold on to it i'm going to get yellow fingers and it'll look like a 20 you know 50 a day smoker but it'll be fine right so while everything else is drying crack on Now with this one, as you can see, I've actually painted some, not expertly, uh, I've just covered it so I know where I'm not supposed to be actually airbrushing. And then of course when I've actually airbrushed this bit, I'll go back onto that to create a second layer. That's to make sure I don't touch the black that's already been created. So the next colour, flash gets yellow, I'm just basically just going to spray it from a bit of a distance just to try and create a little bit of a highlight. Once that's completely dried, I will then dry brush that with flash gets yellow. So I'm kind of hitting it twice because if you've noticed when we put the yellow on to now, that's actually gone a lot darker. So when you put the flash gets yellow on, that will also get a little bit darker from when you first spray it on. So I'm basically just going to hit it from the top just to try and create the effect of a shadow and then of course I'm going to dry brush it with flash kits in a moment. Okay, so we've done that now, we're going to let that dry, which we have done. 
we're going to, or oh, we'll correct that in a moment, but then we're going to hit this with, oh, I might not correct it because I might actually overspray it with blue. Um, we're now going to just hit it with some flash kits, dry brush. Now, be really, really careful when dry brushing because normally what you should do, because we're trying to do it quick, we should normally varnish everything and let it dry. I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just going to gently dry brush this on. Might not need it. It might not even pick some, well, pick some areas up. Possibly not all this. So I'm just going to dry brush. Might not nick because of course we're going to be hitting that bit there with a bright blue. So we might be able to mask a lot of errors. And do this for all the plasma guns. If you want to do your plasma guns a different colour, you can do. If you're following this at home, you don't have to, you don't have to copy me. I'm not that good. <laughs> right, let's crack on with the rest. So, hop, skip and jumped a few uh, bits ahead with oh, the plasma guns. I've actually painted the black using scale colour matte flat black and I've painted the eagle in uh, with a silver and painted the ends with a silver uh, we're going to be hitting that with um, some airbrushing back with some blue at a later point um, we're just going to now I don't know I'm getting my head in the camera there we go we're now going to go on to other silver pieces we're then going to da -da -da, dry brush now for the dry brush on the silver i'm going to do a classic is that in the camera it might be i'm going to do a classic it's going to be necron compound large dry brush and we're just going to go nuts so Silver dry brushed. I've taken some of the bits off, and uh, on the funnels on here, I've done the grey gift charger. So, I wanted to show um, you guys what happens when you take this off the power film on how easy it is to remove, and the fact that it just doesn't take look at that. It, it doesn't take anything off with it. And I've got no silver anywhere else except on the parafilm and on where I needed it to be. It's cracking stuff, I really do recommend if you're gonna if you're wrong, you can stick it together to uh, throw it away. Um, but if you are gonna get it for masking, it's a very good masking material. It's a lot better than masking tape, simply because um, well masking tape for this sort of thing. If you're gonna mask off an area to create straight lines, still use masking tape. Um, but if you're gonna, you just mask off an area so you can airbrush or paintbrush, and you just don't want it splashing onto something else, it's brilliant because you can pretty much shape it. You can even cut it with a knife if you've not seen my previous videos. Um, I think I should have one. I think the one before this is about the Hemlock Fighter, and I think on that one I show cutting. So have a look at that. Um, the next stage on this, we're getting to a point now where I'm going to start using the contrast paints, but I'm going to need to prep. So I've got some grace here. And we're going to put that into certain areas that we're going to be using contrast. Some areas we're just going to be leaving. Um, I think the door panels on here, I'm just going to stick some blue in. Oh, so window panels. Just stick the blue in and then hopefully, if you put it on thick enough, it should... Uh, in fact, we'll have a try right now. It should just create a little window. As you can see, quite easy. Windows slightly glossy. Done. Hey. Um, right. So we've got the silver done. We've got the armor plating done. We're going to get this done on the various bits that we want um, to be painted with that stuff. 
some of the bits that we're going to have painted with that stuff already in silver so i'm going to do that because that's just brushing don't really want to show me doing it and then we're going to hit it with contrast but i'll show you which contrast we're going to be using so i've got my gray sear on and on this luminous battle tank uh, as you can see from the back i'm going to paint that green that's going to be green as well that's going to be green and you notice i've done it in two different colors so hopefully it should give it two different effects this lot's going to be in brown and uh, that'll be in black and then i'll put a yellow on that there and then that'll be born later on um that's all going to be painted with contrast so basically i'm just going to go for each tank crack open the contrast paint paint it paint it paint it and then job is good on the other tanks that type of stuff there underneath i'll probably paint a flesh color so that'll try and emulate like a, a pattern or a um a scroll and then that's just going to be the, the old school a traditional yellow i know that's yellow as well but that should come out golden that should just come out like a yellow uh, and then of course i've i've done the blue on the front of the chimeras as well and then the pickaxes they're just going to have a brown angle same with the bags brown bags the sentinels don't really need any so i'm just going to crack on and get this done So I've done the little bits with the contrast paint, from a distance they look fine. Don't get me wrong, I do think the brown sometimes, put the light up, when we get close it does look a little off, but it means I'm not messing around because we're trying to do these with it like a with airbrush, normal brush, dry brushing, using quick techniques to get these onto the tabletop. And I'm trying my best not to actually touch a lot of the main figure because um, I'm starting to see some uh, some wear on the armour. Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to hit transfers on them. So I've got plenty, lots and lots of uh, transfers. You do I'm, just, I'm hoping because it's been a while, because these are not brand new. These were second hand. These were from eBay, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So we're going to basically get some transfers out. We're going to put the transfers on. I'm going to show you how I do the transfer process. And the reason we're going to put the transfers on now is because then we're going to hit it with some um, silver in a, on a sponge just to give it a little bit of a uh, battered feel. Um, so we've got some chipping coming up. 
Uh, just some simple chipping, nothing too elaborate, just a little bit of, I might even do a little bit of the original base colour, which is the Steel Legion Drab. Put that on first and a bit of a steel over the top. And then we'll paint the tracks. And painting the tracks is going to be quite heavy. It's going to be quite heavy and it's going to be a different technique to what a lot of people are used to, but it's going to look great. I'm not going to have to, uh, it's going to look great, I'm sounding like it. It's going to be great, it's going to be tremendous. Sounds a bit like Donald Trump there. Um, so yeah, we're going to hit everything with transfers, mainly the numbers, maybe a couple of symbols every now and again where we can get away with them. Uh, just trying to keep everything consistent as well. So making sure that the other chimeras, because I've got no other chimeras or luminosas in my army, so all these are going to be fine. Just putting two numbers down, making sure both numbers on either side match. I have put little markings on using, um, sorry I'm not even... <laughs> I've put a little bit of markings on that's using flesh wash which is a really really old wash uh, for workshop but let's that's the phone going let's crack on um, with these transfers so I've got a nice array of old and new school transfers and I'm just showing the transfers because of course these are lots of different transfers I've saved to be honest they come from a stack like this that I've collected over the years. I've never got rid of transfers. I've even got some that are bigger and badder um, on A4 sheets. Some of those ones, Games Workshop, sell A4 sheets are really cracking and I'll be honest with you, worth purchasing. Even if you don't collect, some of them are great even if you don't collect like the Titan ones. Sometimes they're really good just to be able to have on side of buildings or just in general. Uh, they're really, uh, really cracking, uh, the GW ones. Now, some of these are the newer ones, that's a Mechanicus one, that's quite new, that's quite new. Some of them are older, and the reason I've got difference is, if you see this here, this is a very, very old uh, Imperial Tank transfer sheet. Now, both of them, these two are pretty much the same. Both are 2000, but both are a little bit different on the backing. This one's a bit more difficult to actually get the items off. Um, so the darker ones tend to have a more, of a, you need to soak them a little bit longer. And both of these being quite old, when you look in certain lights, I don't know if the camera's catching this, when you look in certain lights on transfers, you can kind of see where it's reflected, that's where the transfer is. So for example, on these numbers, I can tell that outside of the number, there is no backing so when I put it onto the model I know that if I cut far away I'm still only gonna get that bit now these are old school these are pretty much everything is backing so it's always good to have a, a bit of a lamp and check the transfer because of course you could buy some second-hand ones or it could be from a third-party company and then if you can, cut as close as physically possible to the actual transfer itself. That way you're gonna make sure that the, when you actually are cutting the transfer out, you're not gonna get a massive, massive piece that is transfer paper or, or transfer backing or whatever we want to call it on top of a model. You wanna try and keep it as close as possible. So I'm gonna use these two. I'm gonna to have to cut quite close to the physical transfer itself. So. What transfers am I going to use? Personally, I'm thinking about numbers there. I don't know whether to use the numbers from these sheets or possibly to use some of the numbers from these because we've got some, you can see there, we've got one, two, three, four. And I think having a one, two, three, four, I know I've got multiple different sheets out because of course you use and use and use. And just numbering all four of the actual sentinels, one, two, three, four. Um, and then not really having much else on there, just that number. Just having a number one, a number two, a number three, a number four. And then on the vehicles, I'm probably going to have, or try there maybe, and there, I'm probably going to have a long number, <coughs> possibly from this sheet here. So I'm thinking maybe use one of them duplicated, and the same for the other vehicle. And on the chimeras, I'm not sure if I'm going to have, I might have something like a symbol or something there, 
And on the turrets, because on the turrets you should always have a number. So have the long numbers on the Lehman Rust turrets. I might just have vehicle markings and I might just have a smaller number on there. Um, trying to correspond to that just to be able to match up the vehicle with the base that it actually goes to. Same for this one, I might have a, a slightly smaller number there and there. These are really good for this because of course you can always try and match it up as best you can. Um, like the, I think the 306 exists, yeah 306 exists in a large one. In fact we all do, 144 exists on a large one. Um, so you can always put the larger numbers on something else and then put the smaller numbers in some of the smaller details elsewhere. And then just go through maybe every now and again and just pick one or two. I quite like the transfer sheets from these because you can have these little warning symbols. They're always fun to stick at the back somewhere or something that's out of the way because of course these are things that they would actually have physically on a unit. You might even want to stick one there maybe. And just have them slightly different. You could even use these little uh, icons as markings for the particular pilots or crews. So I do like that sheet. That is sheet's going to get looked at quite a lot. I might use a skull or two from there. But mainly, I mean, I'm showing you the differences. And then, of course, these are actually quite good. This Mechanica sheet as well is actually really good for different sort of looking warning numbers and different numbers at the top regarding cogs. And then it's mainly going to be these sheets I'm going to be using for majority of the lettering. Right. So, right. I've got the... Uh, items I'm wanting. Now because if you were going onto like a space marine shoulder pad you should always put a bit of gloss varnish or varnish over the top. I'm not going to do that with this because there's no need because they're going onto solid surfaces. So what I'm going to do is this particular vehicle, I've already got the transfers laid out on how I'm wanting them. Um, this particular vehicle is going to have the 812. So that is going to go across the side there and the two 812s is going to be little markings that are just going to go down the side there. So I'm going to do all the vehicles with their standardised markings first. How I'm going to do this is quite easy. I've actually got in here, this is an old floor improver, this has got me watering. And what I tend to do is I fold up a piece of kitchen roll into four. I just put that on there. And then just drip water onto it. Until it's soaked. You then leave it for a few minutes and then of course use your brush. I'm going to do these two as well at the same time. Now the brush I tend to use is a very is just a standard it's obviously quite a large brush normally, and that's normal so I can drop off any excess. Uh, I also make sure that I have some really heavy duty, and I mean heavy duty, napkins. Now these are really, really strong, and they're quite thick and a little bit expensive, but the reason I do them is because they don't actually pull the transfer off when you use them. And they're really, really good for stuff like this. So like a heavy duty, strong napkin or cloth. Don't use cheap when doing this bit. So my transfer is ready to move, so before I put the transfer on the area, I use micro set and I coat the area in micro set. I've actually used this quite a lot because these do last ages, but I have used this quite often. I'm trying not to touch the... I, I just kind of paint it on the whole section. And get the transfer. Now I tend to put the transfer onto my thumb and then put it onto the brush. That's just my technique, it's an older technique. I'm old. I'll try and get as neat as I possibly can. A little bit more of a set and then from the middle, oop, see where that's torn. Just gonna if it match. To be honest with you if it does tear, I'm not too fussed. And we're gonna put some here. If it does tear, I'm not too uh, too scared on that. Uh, simply because, oh no, I'm upside down. I'm going to be weathering the whole tank anyway. 
will probably hide some mistakes. So I'm doing that, trying to get it kind of close to that third bolt. Still got some of the micro salt on the brush. Now this is the difficult bit with these type of transfers in my opinion. When you turn around, make sure you don't touch areas where you think you've got a transfer. It will come off in your hand. Eight twelve, eight twelve, eight twelve. All matching. I'm gonna put that to one side. Grab some more um, vehicles. No, but the micro set is smelling. Grab some more vehicles for some other decals. I'll put that to one side carefully. Uh, and then, of course, do the rest. Do things like those guys with the one, two, three, four. And then, once all that's done, I'll go back over and maybe add one or two special transfers. Once we've done all that, that's when we're going to come to Micro Sol. Apologies guys, because I'm a dumbass. Uh, give it about 10-15 minutes. The transfers will not be completely dry, but that's when you get your fancy paper. And then you do it from the middle and I just roll it across. Some people use cotton swabs. I just use this. There we go. So we've got transfers on, multiple different ones, different locations. I'm making sure that I don't try and rub away the arm plate, but also don't touch the transfers. The Sentinels have only really got one on, whereas the vehicles have a couple. Some more on the other vehicles as well. What we're gonna do now is the usual. We're going to hit it with Micro Sol. Now, a lot of people hit it with Micro Sol, give it 10, 15 minutes. To be honest, I came across a tutorial online that stated to put it on and leave it there. Don't touch it, don't mess about with it. Put it on a transfer, leave it for one hour. And then you put it on again and then leave it for another half an hour. And if I'm honest, that it makes the transfer completely perfect. So I'm gonna coat these transfers in micro sol. I'm gonna give them an hour, and we're gonna hit him again and um, we're going to hit them again and give them another half an hour and then we'll be able to start getting on with some weathering and glow effects right next up all those. next up we're going to be doing um the damage sort of like the weathering so i'm just going to use a sponge i'll show you the sponge in a moment once i've told piece off we're going to start with steel legion drab then we're going to hit it with a bad and black and then bolt and metal so as if it's pieces coming away we're just going to give it light taps it's not going to be anything heavy and we're going to focus more upon the front and the undercarriage rather than the back this is because of course any incoming shots or anything of that nature is going to be coming mainly from the front i may do a couple of of like line um as if it's been hit by something in particular that's going to be just using a really really small brush with a line of that line of that and line of that uh, just in a so a cascading effect making it look like you just pulled off or chipped away the paint. Let's get some sponges. This is the sponge we're going to be using. This is your standard, typical, um, basically carry case form. Just little bits of it that you can just peel off. And put a half that again and then just use a corner. Put a little bit of that on here, dab that, maybe knock it onto something on a different surface like this and then I'll put little tiny bits of it on there. Again, we've not done the tracks yet. Try and avoid the black, if you can, and try and avoid any other uh, areas, such as the silvers, because of course, they're not gonna be covered in uh, Steel Legion Drab paint chips, are they really? So, just a smidgen of weathering as in, you know, paint chips, just, just on the vehicles, just one of them things that you, you can do, it's a quick simple thing, it 
just breaks it up a little bit, I'll be honest. You can go in detail if you want and try knocking out all the little black bits with silver dots. And if I was doing a proper commission, then yeah, I probably would be doing that, but I'm not. I'm doing a uh, tanks for me, and these to go on the battlefield. So, not massive, but next up is going to be the tracks. So there's four of the tracks. Let's see how much there is there. For the tracks, we are going to be going and using a very odd technique. Now, this odd technique requires you to use a, uh, um, it's actually an ink wash, uh, which I can't find at the moment because it's in the other bag because I don't use it that often. But we're basically recovering the actual tracks with typhus corrosion. So that's applied, ignore these figures. Um, while that's drying, of course, I'm gonna be painting something else. Um, but yeah, let that dry completely. And then once that's dry, we're gonna get out the Necron compound and we're kinda of gonna dry brush over the top of the texture created by the Typhus corrosion. Uh, and that will give us a muddy rail effect. We're still gonna be hitting maybe a little bit more with the airbrush later on, um, but that's mainly just gonna to be towards the bottom of the actual vehicle itself. Right, let's let this dry and we'll show you the dry brushing. So, after we've dry brushed those tracks, we've got a funky look. I don't know going underneath, but why would I do the underneath? No one's going to look underneath the vehicle. Um, we've got a funky look going. It looks battered, it looks like it's been through some mud. It's quick and easy. That's another reason why we're doing it like that. Now, we are going to start sort of doing the plasma and the coils. And we're going to do different stages of kind of like weathering and um, another, well, another set really of weathering. Especially on like gun barrels. So what we're going to do first off, because we're going to work with the airbrush and we're going to work it from light to dark. So we're going to put some Lothian blue, or Lothian blue, into the airbrush. We're going to airbrush the areas where the plasma coils will be. I'm not going to do too much overshadow and then I'm going to add plenty of white scar. This is my last bit of white scar air that I've got so I'm just going to be pouring that in and then we're going to be doing the centre bits of those pieces um, just to give it a nice sort of like glow effect. We may hit it with a bit of uh, well and then I might then I'll make, make it really light and then maybe a bit of gold and glaze just into some edges. And then, after we've done that bit, we're going to work with some, we're going to flush the airbrush out and work with some inks. We're going to start with Draconoff Nightshade and we're going to spray the ends of some of the weapons, the ones that we're wanting to be um, as if we've got heat based um, effects. And then we're going to hit it with uh, Droopsy Violet 
and then surf in sepia. All just basically like dragging off that shade at the edge and then that a little bit further out and then that across the whole lot. Uh, and that will give us our burn effect on the actual weapons. And once we've done that, we're gonna be using my standard basing technique of Rhinox Hide. Airbrush that lightly. And then when it comes to the Sentinels, of course, you can paint the base with that. Just make sure that you airbrush lightly around the feet, maybe. Just to give it a bit of uh, a bit of patterning on the tanks. Airbrush around kind of like the base bit, maybe a little spotches on there, um, bits of course upon that, maybe right there, and the front of the vehicle. And then scrag brown afterwards, try and make it quite thin, uh, quite loosened, and then and just go over and just be a little bit, just a little bit over the Rhinox side that we've already done. And that should lighten it up. And then of course we hit the bases with the scrag brown. Then once that's done, we're just going to dry brush it with Tyrant Skull. Hit it then with your airbrush varnish, whichever airbrush varnish you prefer to use. I use Mecha Varnish. I'm going to give it, water it down a little bit, maybe give them two coats. And they'll be done. So all this next montage is going to be me doing these techniques. And they are done. We've got the, yeah. <laughs> We've got the little bits of weathering on there. We've actually done the bits of the track that has actually been successfully done with the Typhus Corrosion with the, steer, with the Necron Compound dry brushed over the top. And of course, finishing off the bases on the Sentinels. The images going past here should show you what the final products look like. 
It didn't, I know this is about an hour long video, start to finish, but it didn't normally take me too long um, to be able to actually paint all of these. Don't get me wrong, I had to do it in sessions, because of course life does get in the way. Um, but, I mean, I painted four Sentinels, two Chimeras, and two Lemonus battle tanks. Uh, and now they're part of my army, that's a good chunk of points already up there. And of course it brings, I can bring the pain to the enemies of the Imperium. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button if you want to see more. If you want to support the channel, you can do. It's uh, basically you can donate by PayPal over at rootstem.co.uk and at rootstem.co.uk you can also inquire about any form of commission painting. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next time.